it was very small, like it's not like an industrial still, but for me it was important to work with whatever I had to just start and make things happen. So I was playing around and then experimenting. YouTube is there now. So literally you can self, you know, you can, you can self teach yourself, you know. So I learned and over the time I managed to get like 97%. That's why I know it's a yes, you know, I'm getting there. And over time just, you gotta be creative. And it's like um, when you're creating stuff, like being in the kitchen. So I like to create and I've been blending things like, you know, different flavors. I mean, there's no reason why we kind of boring stuff all the time. So right now as well, you find that we are also very open to crazy, you know, somebody will infuse a petition with like cranberry, with um, spicy chili or something. So I think that's where we're getting at. The industry is like you were being more creative. So for me now, we actually have a distilling, I have a bottling contract with one of the big um, local distilleries. So in terms of, you know, increasing capacity and everything, they will do all that. That's in Gehok in um, the North Kanishi. So for us, it was just about making use of what we have. And we're trying to find creative ways to do that. And this, um, Gehok has facilities and things that you're able to age. Like, um, I actually have a rum. I started with a rum as well. So for me, the possibilities, it's, it's endless. But um, I'm happy to just use what we have to just start. And it's a long process and it's a journey. And for us, it's about just ex enjoying the whole process. All right, sis, thank you very much. All right, to my sis on my right, that is Mami Ama. Ama. All right, so I want to ask you, with what are you doing now? What has been your motivational and also who has been mentoring you as well as also how do you create or like you become much more innovative? Because having you as a female or like having very few female when it comes to this our industry as in beverage, distilling, and also understanding how to create your own beverage for us to consume. Definitely, apart from the educational aspect of it, who mentors you, who keeps you, okay? Who mentors you? Because as of now, if you can talk about um, one of the female that I really admire a lot, that is uh, Emma Walker for Johnny Walker Products. She, with, when it comes to excellence in the spirit that she creates and also talking about the notes all the flavors that she can pick up for John Walker. I see ladies being left over, and right now we are thinking about diversity more, more women inclusive. So where do you find your, that sort of um, encouragement, motivation, also like uh, your innovation skills? Where do you get them from? Thank you. I feel like I could speak for about 20 minutes to answer that question, and I know that you wouldn't like it, so let me try and be quick. Let me shout out two specific people. Um, the first person has to be Kojo. Yes. Founder of the reason that so many of us are in this room today. Um, obviously, Tapatio and many others have been... <laughs> have been um, building this industry here in Ghana. Um, and I think what Kojo is doing is incredible. He's someone who I look to for support and for encouragement and for advice. Um, he's someone who isn't selfish and someone who understands that when we all grow, he also grows. He's someone who um, will buy my bottles and take them all over the world and be like, this is Ghana. This represents us. This is what we're proud of. Um, and I think in a, in a world where so many people are just trying to build their own thing, you can kind of forget that actually sometimes when you build together, um, you, you're stronger. So when he said he's doing this, and I know he's had this vision from 2016, he's been telling me about it for at least two or three years, right? Um, as like, whatever it is, we're, we're gonna be involved. Um, we're gonna support, we're gonna support the best that we can. And so for me, my mentors, my support, my encouragement, everyone that supports me, I also support them. I. People ask why is rain called rain, and it's called rain because we're building a community where everyone feels royal. Starting from our farmers, um, all the way through the hospitality space, any of the bartenders in here that I've engaged with, who make our drinks, who um, you know support us, there isn't a power dynamic there. It's I'm coming to you, you're coming to me, and we're scratching each other's backs. So first person to shout out is definitely Kojo. The second person that I talk about so often um, is Fawn Weaver. So if you haven't heard of her, yes, 
if you haven't heard of her, please make sure you do your research. Um, Fawn Weaver is the founder and CEO of a whiskey brand in the United States. It's called Uncle Nearest. And Uncle Nearest Whiskey um, is the fastest growing American whiskey brand in history. Fawn Weaver happens to be a black woman. So she happens to have African ancestry. And um, she discovered the story of a man called Uncle Nearest, right? That was his name. And he taught Jack Daniel how to make whiskey. He was an enslaved African man, and he taught Jack Daniel how to make whiskey. Have you heard of Jack Daniel? But you haven't heard of Uncle Nearest, and you haven't heard of Fawn Weaver. And so when we're talking about the story from backyard to bar, when we're talking about African spirits, we have to also understand that African spirits are global spirits. So um, Jack Daniels is known to be a Tennessee whiskey. And um, it's uniquely Tennessee whiskey because it's filtered through what's called maple coals. We've been filtering liquids and water through coal in West Africa for generations and generations. It's that knowledge and that science that made Tennessee whiskey, right? If we also look at um, rum, which we make, rum can only be classed as rum if it's made from sugarcane. So you will find products that will say rum, but if it's not made from sugarcane and it's made from cassava or something else, it's a cassava spirit, or if it's made from palm, it's a peteche, or all of those things, and it's, it's you know, we, understanding all of those processes. But rum is known as a Caribbean spirit, um, but it's Africans in the Caribbean that invented rum. We, um, on plantations, um, when we were growing sugarcane, um, we were given the byproduct molasses because the slave masters didn't know what to do with it, and we created rum. Um, and then, you know, there's a whole longer story which I won't get into <laughs> beyond that. Um, but those are the two people because I think they're just doing incredible things that just haven't been done um, and really making us as African people proud all over the world. All right, so um, the next question is going to be a follow-up question, but obviously the two of you need to answer it because um, it's very, very important. For the industry as of now that we are in, we are thinking a lot about always building capacity and also trying to collaborate. You just spoke also about the awards that you've been able to achieve, like the Ghana beverage industry recently. Have you thought of, or let's say, have both of you thought of trying to also establish your spirits to compete in the international world? Talking about the San Francisco World Spirits competition, International Spirit Challenge, talking about the world whiskey, all the spirits that you understand that the globally is being recognized. Can, are you thinking of how best you can put it out there for them to see the great work you females are doing, or let's talk about these amazing sisters are doing? Because I believe collaborations and also trying to showcase what you've done to the international world gives you a lot of platform. So I want you to just let us know what are your thoughts and also what are the collaborations that you think you need and support from us as industry people for you to get there. And also, what are we expecting based on your timeline? Maybe two years, five years, three years, but please make it very short so like we can have another question. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for that question. So for us, in, on social media, our tagline is even Chase the Sun. And Chase the Sun is like making, once again, making things happen, chasing your dream, just making, going for it. And over the years, so now, in fact, what started off as just perhaps, you know, an idea or just passion in the kitchen now, I now see that um, the brand is growing. For instance, when, when we went to, we've, I did a trade show with, um, the Ghana Export Promotion Agency. So I went to Tanzania, I've been to um, Kenya, and it is well received. We have won consecutively, like um, Ghana Beverage of the Year Awards, we won Liquor of the Year for 2022 and 2023. So now it's like we're trying to get to the next level. And all of these competitions, there's also about networking. Some of the um, competitions, honestly, there's a lot. So I joined the UK Embassy, the UK Chambers, and I think they're also trying to definitely empower us more and you know tell us more about, get us, that's a way for us to get more involved on the international level. But of course, it starts with here. You know, growing the brand here, getting people to actually spread the word, 
you know, so it spreads, you know, for, for, for us to be international and global, we've got to capture our own continent first. And it all starts with us, how we um, support, how we um, collaborate. It always says that, you know, um, competition starts at the bottom. And I believe where we are now, we need to look at collaborations. And I think that's the way forward. And over, over the years, I've actually had a couple of, um, I think Diageo, they still, they had a, it was like a fund that was targeted for like um, African brands. And I thought it was important to just get everybody along because I know a couple of other Ghanaian brands. And if we all come together, um, I feel like there's a way that we can all grow. You know, so that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. I think it's like. Thank you. Um, so I want to start by touching on something that Pearl said, um, which is, it's about us supporting each other, supporting ourselves, right? Um, and for me, it's not just about support. It's, look at the bottles that are in front of you, right? These bottles can sit next to any Johnny Walker, any Don Julio, any product that you see out there where we, we yes, we want support and yes, we need support, but we've also made sure that we are already creating something that fits perfectly on a, on a world stage. Um, in terms of awards, for us, um, like I said, we won two awards at the Ghana Beverage Awards this year. Um, it was the first time we've ever entered. Pearl Sahara Solis also won an award this year, but you've been winning awards for years, so we have some. <laughs> um, globally, um, we've won awards on three continents. We've won two awards here in Ghana. Um, we won awards at the New Orleans Spirits Competition, um, Global Brand awards, so we're winning awards for Liquid and for the brand design. Um, this week, I also learned that we won a Good Taste Award, um, Great Taste Award, which is, um, you, you may or may not have heard of, um, but it's like, I think something like 50,000 brands apply every year, and I think something like, I don't know, a few thousand get them. Um, so, as it says on our bottle, we are Africa to the world. We are proudly African, proudly Ghanaian um, brand made here. Um, and I think it's important that, you know, as we, as we look out there and we see brands that we know and recognize that eventually on a global stage, these are the brands that you will also know and recognize. Um, I'm proud to be Ghanaian, I'm proud to be building the brand here in Ghana. Um, but I also know that in order for the work that I'm doing in Ahafo region to have the impact that it needs to have to empower the farmers to build um, a business the size that it needs to be, we have to be taking a global perspective to it. So often people say, oh, why, is it, why doesn't it have a Ghanaian name? Why doesn't it have an Ashanti name, right? And I say, well, look at the bottle. Do you not see yourself in that bottle? Do you not look at the stopper? Do you not look at the crest and you see yourself? But it's also about how do you ensure that what you're presenting both is authentic and true to who you are, but also able to communicate to others who will look at the bottle. They won't see themselves. They won't recognize it, but they'll say, well, that's a nice bottle. That tastes nice, right? So it's, in terms of that, in terms of awards, in terms of being um, globally positioned, um, it's bringing the best of what we have here, what we do here, and understanding how you communicate that on a global stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So just a second, I think I have two more questions before any other person can also ask questions because um, we have some limited time. So let me just finish this very quick. All right, so I'm a, I'll go back to you again before the last one goes to my sister. So thinking about going globally, what are the plans that you are putting in down for the industry people? Because at the end of the day, the industry people are the people who can communicate more to the international world. Talking about the bars, the hotels, even like the shops that you see, but the most people who can easily communicate to the global world what are you doing? What are you collaborating with them? Because it's very, very important. If a bartender has this amazing bottle, and then he or she can talk about different bottles that is much more important than his own identity as an African or Ghanaian, what are the measures that you are putting in? Mm -hmm. As in the educational aspect, mm -hmm. motivational aspect, what are the inspirations for them to believe in this amazing bottle mm -hmm. that you have here? Okay. So this is the first question that I want to ask so that you let us know, because we are here to support, because we started from Africa, we were born from Africa. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we need to support it. But mm -hmm. how can we support? Sure. 
Okay, um, you don't make it easy to keep these answers short at all. All right, so let me start by saying um, I want everybody in this room, when we're back here next year, to hold me accountable. Um, I'm going to say to you now that we do have programs and initiatives in the works. I don't want to talk about them until they're ready. So please, if you see me here next year and I can't come to you and say, this is what we're doing, it's on camera. Everyone can see, right? Um, so that's the first thing. Um, we have a distillery. There's lots of bartenders that have, in Ghana that have never been to a distillery and never actually seen the process being made and seen the sugar cane. I mean, most people have seen sugar cane, but seen it grown and how the process works and everything like that. So there's a lot that we have in the works that we're trying to do is the first thing. Secondly, as I said, um, we're building a community where everyone feels royal. And I mean that when we do have our, our drinks placed in bars, there's a way in which we do that. So there's some bartenders in this room that have worked with our products. And we're not listed everywhere, but where we are listed, our cocktails are always an instant bestseller. And the reason for that is partly because the liquid is, is great, the people that are making it are super talented, but also because the people who are making and serving those drinks um, understand the brand, they buy into it, and I'm very aware that it's the hospitality industry and sector who are going to be the people that make this brand or, or don't, right? So I think sometimes, um, particularly in Ghana, there isn't enough respect for people who are so-called serving you. I'm very aware that, number one, if you're, if you're bringing me food or you're bringing me drink, you have my life in your hands, first of all. Um, and second of all, like I said, as a, as a brand owner, um, if if you guys don't buy into what it is that we're doing and you don't appreciate it and you don't recognize it and don't um, like those products, then you're not going to sell them. I'm not, I'm not there every time my drink is being served. So like I said, please hold me accountable. This time next year, I'm excited to tell you exactly what it is that, um, that we have happening. Um, but yeah, just, just simply that I, I'm very conscious that it's the hospitality sector that builds any brand. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is the last question for my sis right here. So when it comes to creating this amazing brand, what is your vision, your mission, and also how do you want to accomplish and also help females especially to get also involved? Because in our world aspect, when it comes to hospitality, men are like, let's say, 90%. Females are like 10%, if I'm even giving the, the cards well. But how do you go about it to help a lot of females to join? Because apparently, what we believe females are much more entrepreneurship people, more than guys. That is what we believe in now. And we want you to also help them. So how are you going about it based on how you were able to create this? the vision and also the mission and how you want to bring along a lot of females to start doing stuff like that. Sure, that's a long question. <laughs> so right from day one, the vision was to create an amazing product, not just for Ghana, but beyond, which is why we made sure we had a glass bottle, we made sure that the name was one suitable, it could go anywhere. And to be honest, a lot of the time when people actually see the drink, because we've been around since 2017, and people always think, oh wow, it's actually an imported product. You know, so that's actually one amazing thing. And first of all, I mean, I'm just, an, I'm, I'm just I'm a nobody, right? And I think, honestly, it just shows that if you believe it, if you work hard at it, if you have the passion, you can make it happen. I mean, I'm just a normal, we're just normal human beings here, right? But the fact that I have done it, I'm happy to share with others. I know we always do like master classes. So the next two years, my plan, what I want to do is to actually have a class and have like show people how to distill, how to blend, how to, you know, because people are doing creative stuff in their own kitchen, but it's not, you know, legal, you know, but I think we have to find a way to bring them all in. Um, I'm, gl I'm I love working with women, especially the mixologist, comes right here over there. I actually met her not too long ago. And it's important to show the creative aspect and to bring more people in. Ladies, there's, like, there's so many things you can do with it. So in terms of even um, ways to the hospitality industry, for me, I've also partnered with um, the 
hospitality awards in Ghana and all the hotels. And the idea is for, you know, to get all the waiters, especially waitresses, you know, we want them to actually learn about the service, be prepared to do the work. You know, a lot of the time people want, um, they don't want to do the hard work. It's a journey. So you've got to let them know that they have to put in the work. They've got to be dedicated. They've got to be passionate. So me, I always, I always talk to the young people and I find out what, they, what their vision, what they're trying to do. So now, our mission now is, you know, I want everybody, you know, like when you have events, everybody, like Sahara Solis, I want it to be part of the drinks, your diary, engagement. We have a lot of celebrations here, whether it's funerals or whatever. So the main vision is so that everywhere, oh my God, when you see the bottle, you actually pick it up. I'm like, oh wow. And then, of course, we, we're going to go global. You know, we've got like a five-year plan that we are working on. And I believe that just working with the right people, the right strategic partnerships, it is what's needed to take us to the next level. Thank you very much. All right, so now the floor is open for questions. I thank Mr. Peter right here. Happy days. Uh, ladies, first I want to say it's an amazing job what you guys are doing, uh, especially for the community. Uh, and from what I've seen being here for the past three days, uh, it is, again, like we say, it's a men-led community. But then I wanted to ask, with you ladies actually coming up and being up there, showcasing that you are able to actually achieve and actually win in a men-led area, for Rain and for Sahara itself, what are like the, where do you see the brand itself as like, if, if your brand was an was artist, what type of artist would it be and where would it fit in? So that the community itself can be like, this is where we go, are you, I'm a piano artist, are you an Afrobeat, are you a hip hop, are you rap? Where does this brand sit and what is that culture that it's saying to build that real community that the brand is going to be? Okay. <laughs> I love your question. Thank you. Um, so for us at Rain, um, what I'd have to say is there's one bottle here in front of you, um, which is our ultra premium skew. It's a pure sugarcane juice rum. It's organic um, sugarcane that we use to make it. There's absolutely nothing added. Um, we have three products available at the moment. This is the one in front of me because we haven't actually released it yet. So this is the first opportunity for people in Ghana to, to try it. So please do make sure you come over to our stand and try all of our products if you haven't already. Um, <laughs> we're ready for you. We are ready. Um, but we have two other products. So we have a spice rum and we have a baobab and hibiscus rum. The reason that we have these three products is because, to your point, every one of them speaks to a different consumer or a different occasion. Um, I'm trying to think specifically of artists that each one of them speaks to, but this one is aged um, in former brandy barrels. So if you're a cognac drinker, when you try this rum, you'll, you'll get those kind of notes to it. Um, if you are a whiskey drinker, similarly, this is probably the one that you might lean towards. We've got spiced rums, um, and all of our rums are using African ingredients and African botanicals. So we've got a baobab and hibiscus rum. Our spiced rum has kuku and a little bit of coconut. So if I was to think of, I'd have to think of three artists. I'd have to think of one for each product. Um, That's hard. That's hard. <laughs> I'd have to think of one for each product. What I can tell you is that those artists would be the biggest and the best African artists from across the continent. Chale, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into the politics. I'm not gonna go with Star Kodi. I'm not going to come with Shata. I'm not gonna come with Stone Boy. We don't need Walhala in this place. Okay, we don't need that Walhala in this place. So whoever you think, <laughs> the biggest, the best. Chale, that's for you to decide. Whoever you think, the biggest and the best African artists from all over the, the continent. Yeah. Because our ingredients, you know, we're using a bit of coffee, we're using a bit of vanilla. We are representing the whole continent. So whoever you think the biggest and best African artists are, that's who Rain is. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. 
which also, okay, so <laughs> I don't even know how to answer. But basically, for me, definitely, um, because like I said, the focus was always for Africa first, because we need to focus on our continent. So definitely, I would definitely go for Afrobeats, I'm a piano, because we're also trying to get to the, you know, the whole of Africa first, and then we do the rest of the world. And for us, it's sweet, it's bad as scotch, it's, it's so versatile, you can do anything with it. Um, you can even put in your ice cream, you can bake with it, you know, like it allows you to just make things, be creative, you know, so we like that vibe. And we're all about positivity, positive vibes, so energy, you know, so that's where we get it from. <laughs> Right. Alexo. So once again, congratulations to both of you. Um, I just wanted to sort of uh, wonder if you both could touch on some of the difficulties that you have, because I'm sure it's not been an easy journey to get here. Of course, we don't want all of it, but if you could just pick perhaps uh, two key challenges um, in your industry, be it pricing, be it distribution, you know, what are the two key challenges that you face uh, to get this bottle in front of us? Because I think sometimes we undermine how long it is to do that process. Yeah, okay, so it's important to say once again that the brand was actually established in 2017. Um, and then obviously, um, we've been trying to find the right partnerships because you need to have a partnership. You need to have the right people who, um, who, have, who share the same vision and passion with you to see the brand grow. And access to markets and access to funding has been a big challenge. So really, we've had to do it like small scale and in steps. And it's been an interesting journey because it showed us that, you know, you can grow organically. But I think we're now at a stage where to take things to the next level, we're looking at strategy, we're looking at partnerships. To, you know, we need investors to come on board. Um, we've been able to do a lot despite the fact that, you know, like I said, I didn't have access to, you know, like a big distillery or whatever. But for me, it was important to just start. And um, it's been hard. Oh, my goodness. But I think resilience, consistency, everywhere. Yeah, it's a small brand. Um, it's a small, you know, small company. But we're very powerful and very passionate about what we do. So whatever opportunity we get, we are there. You know, trying to make an impact, trying to spread the word, trying to, you know, show what we're trying to do. But it's even in Ghana, like... Um, you know, um, in terms of the system, there's no real route map. So, like, you find that you're going from A to B when you should be going from B to C, but you're just, you know, you're, it's like a maze. You're in it, and I think it's an experience. So you learn, and then you know how to, like, the struggle is real, honestly. Entrepreneurship is not easy. I'm not going to come and say that, you know, but the vision is so huge, and I believe, I, I be, I'm so passionate about the brand, and I'm so happy to see that, you know, Rain, like, we're doing amazing things. We just need the right, the system. Once the, like, the government puts in policies that actually support entrepreneurship, you know, like, in terms of tax, and all those things. Because production, cost of production in Ghana is actually expensive. And unfortunately, it means that we have to pass that on to our clients, you know? But it's just, I think, um, it's, it's, oh my goodness, <laughs> like, after 2021, when COVID came, we almost gave up, but it was important to just keep going. And that just shows the organic growth that we have done. You know, starting from my mom's kitchen, I started with like 1,000 bottles initially. That was what I could afford at the, at the time. Actually, I got some partners involved. And then over the years now, we're looking at, you know, we, we got a container from China. Of course, we don't do bottles here. So you have to make it, you, you got to import, you know, China, all these things. The dollar rate is like now, times three of what it was, you know, when we first started. So all these things, it's like we need a stable, a stable government, a stable economy. But all the same, we're still going strong because we're very passionate about what we're doing. So we believe that we can overcome all the barriers. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have three more questions and then the next seminar falls and that's so sis. Let me try and keep my answer to your question brief, Alex. The problem with your question is that we can only choose two or three. Even today, when, we, um, when I got here this morning and we set up our stand, it rained yesterday, the roof opened and it started to rain on my head. So, uh, showers of blessings. That's, I had to take it that way, right? Then someone fell on the wall and then the wall broke. Um, so, just two or three, dear, I, 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 I possibly couldn't. Um, I always try to make my answers 
useful to the people who I think are in the room. And I'm going to guess that there may be other entrepreneurs, people in the drinks industry who might want to set up a brand um, or want to have a, you know, any, any kind of business in, in hospitality. Um, the first thing I would say is don't. I'm joking. Um, I would say... Pearl touched on so many challenges with bringing a physical product. There's probably about 20 different components to this bottle, right? So the stopper in itself is bespoke. It, this is the only one that exists. We own the mold. You've got to get the labels around the neck and at the back. They're spray painted black. It's got this, on, um, this design at the front. It's called a decal. Um, then you've got to get the tax labels. Then you've got to speak to GSA and, and all of these different. So you see a bottle and it just looks like a bottle. When you're bringing a product to market, product and especially um, food and drink is probably the hardest industry that you can bring a product um, because it's highly regulated. Alcohol is a controlled substance as well. So there's a lot of challenges and I don't say this to put you off, but what I would say is if, that you, if you are a budding entrepreneur, don't start with a product. The first thing you have to learn how to sell is yourself. This is not the first business that I've run. And if it was, I would have given up by now, 100%. I tell you that. Rain has been on the market for one year. I started working on this five years ago, and I did it quietly without anybody knowing what it was that I was doing. And I'd been running businesses for over a decade beforehand. Learn to sell yourself. Learn to sell services. Learn to sell um, things that have uh, low um, investment something that doesn't, you don't have to manage physical inventory. If you can um, build something online, whatever it is, learn to sell something that doesn't require high investment to start with. Once you start to learn like systems and structures around business and things like that, then move to a product. That would be my advice. I would advise you not to start with a product, not don't do a product, but don't start there would be my personal advice. Thank you very much. I'm a student from Accra Technical University, the hospitality, doing hospitality course. And my question is, so apart being exposed in the Ghana market and beyond, what is the special or unique thing that is making your brand or your product to stand out in the international market? Thank you. Thank you. So I did say before, um, the design, when we thought about it, it was always about having a name that was going to cut across, not just Ghana. You know, sometimes Ghanaians, we want local brands, but we're trying to go beyond that. So it was always about, you know, making something that is attractive when you see it. And even the content, it's a shame that we can't try some here, but like, we've actually worked so hard to make sure that we're bringing a quality product to you. And um, obviously we've been through all the process, the FDA, the regulations, and we know that with, I mean, there's just a few changes that need to be done, but we know that we are equally as good as some of the top brands. So we're actually very confident about our brand. Um, we are slowly working on distribution and marketing across other aspects, you know, other countries. And I actually believe that just the product and also having the brand story, people are amazed when they hear that, oh, wow, this is how we started. And I think, like I said, you actually need to build on yourself. Really, you're selling yourself as an experience. You've got to draw the people in first before you, they can, you know, get to know about the brand. So it's, all, it's, a, it's a brand, you know, it's, it takes time to grow. And I believe that we have actually positioned ourselves well to do well on, it, on the international market. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I think, um, in all honesty, it's kind of easy sometimes to come up with something unique. So you could start the, the first Ghanaian whiskey brand. You could start the first Ghanaian this or the first African that, right? So being unique actually isn't necessarily that difficult. What is more difficult is making sure that you're actually serving a need that exists among your customer base. So the first thing you have to do is research, right? Um, so when I started this brand, um, where we make this rum, we can make any spirit. We can make um, gin, we can make, you know, the distillation process, you just find a product, um, a, a raw material that has sugar in it, and you distill it and you make alcohol. Like all alcohol is basically made the same way. 
people often ask me why rum and it was through doing research so i understood that for the past at the point of doing the research initially for like 10 15 years before that we had seen um, what was called the renaissance so gin was like the boom spirit all over the world so you had um, from like 20 gin brands on the global market, we had like 500, right? So lots of people were saying, gin is big, so let me start a gin brand. But if you actually looked at the data at that point, gin had reached its zenith and it was actually in decline and rum was growing at twice the speed of gin. But if you don't do your research, you don't know that. So you just look at what you can see and you think, oh, I'm gonna do this because this looks sensible. Research, research, research. Understand your market. Is your market a local market? Is it, um, is it a particular town? Is it a particular country? Is it global? Whatever it is, understand your market, understand your audience, and understand what it is that they need. So often people start businesses for what they want. Then sell it to yourself. <laughs> it's not a business. It's just <laughs> a project, right? So if you don't understand who it is that you're trying to sell to and ensuring that you're actually meeting a need of your customers, and when someone comes to your stand and they say, I don't like this or I don't like that, you need to listen because if you want those people to buy your product, you need to give them what it is that they're looking for. But so often people say, oh, but my mum likes it. Charlie, then your mum will be your customer. <laughs> Finish. I just wanted to add something. So actually, um, when I first started, I actually, you know, I did the research. I actually came up with six different products, six different spirits. I had the rum, the gins, the spice rum, even um, like uh, Irish cream and all that, even herbal drinks. But I think once I, you know, I actually did the re market research and I found at that time there was a lot of, there's a lot of herbal drinks in Ghana. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, might not be a good idea because this is very, a lot of competition. So I chose to be brave and be different. And sometimes you have to make that decision, you know, and stick to it. And I, for me, it was important to establish at least one brand. And then I know in that in future, I'll, I'll be able to bring the rest that, you know, that should have come in the beginning. So I understand that life is a journey, is a process. So you just have to just enjoy the journey, you know, and make the most of it. Thank you very much. My name is Emma Brown. I'm a mobile bartender, um, CEO of She Flair GH. <laughs> yes, please. So, um, my question fits very well with how your answer ended. So, it has to be um, do with customer preference. Um, so, I want to find out how have customer preferences shifted over the period of years? That is from the time you started your business, and then how have you guys adapted to this change? So yes, it's very important to listen to what your clients say. And also you have to have like a, shall I say a professional team, because I've had so many different feedback. Somebody was like, oh, it tastes so and so. And then I was like, oh, so you can't tweak it. You can't take all that they're telling you. So you have to, you, You've actually, um, yes, what you're telling me is true, but this is, what, this is where we are, this is, the, this is what we're trying to do. So it's actually knowing um, where the, 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 brand, the brand direction that you want to go to, because you can't, you can't favor, the drink is not for everybody. I, I appreciate that. So perhaps if you don't like this, oh, why don't you try this? So it's also about learning, you know, we listen to what you say, and we have, we have varieties. Somebody might say that, oh, this is for the girls. This is, you know, it's, it's it's too, too mild, too sweet. I was like, okay, fine, don't worry. I have a 40% here for you. So it's, you've got to make sure that you're giving them, shall I say, like um, offers, you know, so that they know what to choose. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've, you've got to change your brand entirely, you know, <laughs> because people will say anything sometimes, but you have to know yourself, your brand. You have to know where you're going, what's your purpose. I know mine is 23%. You can't tell me, oh, do it so, so, and so. But I'm actually also open to um, modifications in future, you know? So it's also about, it's a win-win, because -win, we're making the products for you. So it's your feedback that we're gonna take, and then perhaps we can tweak it. But sometimes you've got to find like a, a mid-range a mid so that everybody's happy. <laughs> no, I, I would agree with that. It's a really great, did you have that question before you came in or you? Okay. Because it, it followed so well from the previous one, I'm like, wow, okay. 
Um, so no, great question. I would say something similar. There is a really fine balance between um, taking on feedback and doing your research and, and, and all of those things and being, like you said, really clear and consistent with your purpose. So for me, the research started before the products even existed. So that's the first thing. You have to make sure that, yes, you take feedback, but then you iterate. So the first bottles didn't look like this, right? Um, so it's being patient with yourself. It's finding those opportunities. Um, I think also specifically, so to your question, how do you pivot? How do you change? Sometimes you don't. It just, you have to make sure that anyone that gives you feedback, you hear it, but you don't have to listen to it. So you hear it, you take it in, you balance it, you balance it with what you already know um, and with what else you may have heard and you're kind of always processing, you know, you're always processing. So don't, I would say, don't disregard anyone's feedback. Even if someone, tell it, yesterday we had a lot of drunk people coming to the stand, so you, they come and they're talking all kinds of stuff and you just think, please go away. But sometimes when people are drunk, they speak the truth as well. So actually that's, Great people to, to hear what they, <laughs> what they have to say. Um, but you, as you would say, you take it with a pinch of salt. So every feedback that you get, you hear it, but it doesn't mean you listen and you do what, what is told would be what I would say. Follow up. So, you know, in the business world, we have something called Kaizen, continuous improvements. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I'm just saying, maybe you already have that. So, I'm thinking, like, as you process your future goals and all that, in as much as people give feedback, it's for us to become better persons of ourselves or our brand. So, we can also try to implement that. And I'm sure that that is something that also push us out there because when people also feel that we listen to their concerns and they see a bit of change, that's as if it fits in our goal, like you're saying, then we have... Um, a better future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so last one before we dive into the next seminar. We'll be breaking like for 15 minutes for the next seminar, but right away, last questions. Last question, sorry. Last question. All right. Kassa. Hello, ladies. My name is Cassandra. I'm from the European Barton School in Cape Town. And I'm someone who drives community, or is very passionate about community. And what I wanted to say is that I feel that we as women, we sometimes we have to compete so much, and then we have to learn at some certain point to not take things personally. Hence why the feedback and suggestions, and you adapt your product as you go. I wanted to find out from you, what are your future plans to build a bigger bartender community around African spirits? Do you have any sort of ideas or competition plans or any collaborations you would want to partner up with? Um, if there's anyone in the room here that has any, any other suggestions as well, what are your what are your what are your 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 vision for the future for including bartenders with your brands and how to help build a community with your brands? Thank you for your question. I think you started asking about being women and about competition. And that's really funny because this morning, Pearl texted me and she's like, hey, Emma, we're on this panel together. Um, and, you know, there were meant to be other people on the panel. And she was kind of like, I don't want it to be like we're in competition with each yeah. other. I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, it's not this whole, it's the two women in the industry or whatever, and they're competing. So we, we're there having chats with each other, right? Um, posting each other's stuff on Instagram because there's space enough for a butternut squash, uh, not butternut squash, but um, butterscotch. But, butterscotch, but not butternut squash. Hey, Charlie, it's a, it's yes. a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's the next product, butternut yeah, squash yeah. something, I don't know. We'll experiment. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, liqueur and, and a luxury rum brand. If there's enough space for Johnny Walker and Jack Daniels and all of these guys to exist within a yeah. global market, why would there not be enough space for two black women to sit on a stage exactly. together in Accra? Exactly. Like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. We, we take that one too. Or as Tapa would say, his sweet sisters. Oh, bless him. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, um, so I remember the first time. In fact, I'm, I was I came to your lunch, right? Yes. And at the I mix, the, the first tasting we ever did. Yes. Message me afterwards. You're like, you're, what you're doing is amazing. Yeah. 
And for me, like honestly, like they keep saying, like there's no, there's no need for, com um, for us to be competitors. We want to be able to collaborate. Let's, Amma, let's go to South Africa. And when we put our heads together, consignments, everything, it, it's better, you know? So South Africa, we're coming, right? Yeah. Listen, we're looking to collaboration. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> 100%. I, I, because, listen, all, all uh, exactly, two minutes, I'm coming to you, don't worry, yeah? <laughs> Nigeria, yes. Yes, yes, Omo Niger, yes, we're coming. Yes, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I think to that point, right, if you turned up and there was only two brands at the Accra Bar Show, you wouldn't be very happy. What would you even be coming for? There's people who are here from all over the continent, maybe all over the world, yeah. because they want a rich experience. So at the moment, we have a rich experience with um, brands mostly from the US and from Europe. At some point, you have to walk in and see a room full of brands from the continent because that's where we are. And if we can't build that, then there's no point in us being here. Like this is, this is the beginning in many ways, right? Um, people see our, our, our stand next to Afro and they're like, oh, how do you feel? Afro is next to you, oh, the competition. I'm like, Chelly, I'm looking at Johnny Walker's stand yeah. <laughs> because Johnny Walker had the biggest space in this whole, exactly. right? <laughs> I'm looking at their colors. I'm like, mm, this is slick. How do I do this? How do I do yeah. that? I'm not looking no. next door at my brother who's also on the same journey as me. Like this, this is not a mentality no. that I take. And this is not a mentality that I believe is what will take us forward. Additionally, I loved the follow-up that you gave. You gave feedback. Too often, particularly Ghanaians, we don't like to give people feedback. Mm. They'll come to your stand. Mm. <laughs> and then just look at it and then just walk away. Like, tell, like we're here because we want to engage with you. Yeah. We want to hear what's on your mind. Like, tell me. Like I said, it's not everything that you say I'm going to listen to and everything that you say I'm going to do. Right. But we genuinely want to have engagement. And, and I believe that feedback is a gift. So sometimes you give someone feedback, you tell them you, like something, you don't like something and they take offense to it but it takes me time and energy to tell you that I don't like something that you're doing to help you improve the thing that you're doing. And that's one of the most valuable things you can give anybody in the world. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my competition is Johnny Walker, yeah. today, at least, <laughs> <laughs> because they have the best stand. Yeah. It's not Pearl, like. Okay, so <laughs> we're trying to, you know, make Ghana proud. So I was, like, I remember I was so excited when I came up with a brand, I was like, oh, wow. So, and then funny enough, people were sending me pictures. I was like, listen, I even took a picture. I have a picture with Rain. It's not about that. We're not competing, you know. I'm happy to support her. And I think that's the way we're going to grow, you know. We, we can all grow together. We all have our dreams, we, you know. The focus, Charlie, we're going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. We did answer that earlier, oh, yeah. <laughs> specifically. What are we planning to do for the bartender community? Okay, so I feel basically, are you telling me you're not happy with the answer that we gave earlier? So, so if I can remember, she said that she doesn't want to give a lot of details out, but obviously by end of like next year, if hopefully we are in, that is when she can get into that situation. But she also even proposed about the distillery tours that even some of the bartenders don't understand that they're still in order, they've not seen it. So indirectly, she was giving certain answers and she can't give certain answers because she wasn't very certain on that. Yeah, all right. Thank you, my <sighs> sweet brother. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I would like to say a very big thank you for coming up and also turning up. All the contributions are well, well, well accepted and also every single, um, let's say, um, understanding of their spirits, their journey, and also vision and mission of what they want to do. We are in together as what one people. We need to support our sisters and also obviously, because we can't stop trying to communicate with them. They're still around us. We can text them, we can bring any ideas to them. And